on today is going to be, uh, there's five bullet points that we're going to be going over. Uh, I think it's just kind of useful to give everyone a sense of just some of the overall capabilities um, of the CLC Genomics Workbench. And then we're going to dive specifically into the Kyogen CLC Microbial Genomics Module, aka the MGM module. And within that, we're going to explore whole shotgun taxonomic profiling. And in order to do this, uh, we're going to go through like an installation of the MGM because it is a, a, a plugin. Talk uh, specifically about how we can download and manage, easily download and manage references within the workbench, for, specifically for taxonomic profiling. And then, you know, really on the sort of getting going uh, before we can execute the tool is really just getting the data into the application. And what we're going to be bringing in are reads in the form of FASTQ and metadata, which I can uh, define a little bit further as we get going. Once we've done the, sort of the prerequisite work, if you will, of getting the reads, the reference, and our metadata in, we're going to go through and execute this uh, workflow for data QC and taxonomic profiling, where we're going to end up with counts uh, for each taxonomic unit in or taxonomic um, organism in our, our table. And then once we've done that per sample, we're gonna then merge our groups together or merge our samples together. So that way we can do some statistical comparison and some advanced uh, visualization and things along those lines. So that's uh, the lay of the land of what we're gonna be uh, covering today. Hopefully that aligns with everyone's expectation on the call. And so just to get going, uh, I'm gonna focus on overview of the genomics workbench. And I always like to pull up the tools here just to give everyone a sense that, you know, today we're simply going to be focused on, as I mentioned, the microbial genomics module. And not only that, but just specifically within that, the taxonomic analysis uh, types of capabilities. So it's important, I, I want everyone to know on the call that, you know, we are focused on one small um, facet of the capabilities of the genomics workbench, namely the microbial genomics module. But some key areas I always like to point out to people are really the resequencing analysis area. And this is where we'll see functions like our mapping reads to uh, reference, uh, variant detection types of functionalities, and then tools for you know, annotating, comparing, and filtering uh, variants that are called. Um, additionally, I think it's important also to point out uh, the addition of single cell. So single cell and the microbial genomics module are part of our premium uh, licensing for the genomics workbench. And so with that premium license, you would have both plugins uh, or all the plugins that are commercially available. And one of those being the single cell. And we can see that there's, there's been a, a large focus in the development of single cell within the genomics workbench uh, for both processing and visualization purposes. Uh, additionally, your traditional RNA-seq, bulk RNA-seq types of functionalities are also, also um, covered within this site, uh, this application. Um, and then of course, last but not least, also microRNA. I did point out and highlight uh, some of the additional capabilities for say, Genovo assembly, um, namely because when I'm in sort of the microbial space, there's oftentimes uh, potential for customers who are doing Genovo assembly. Keep in mind, I'm only highlighting four areas within the genomics workbench and uh, breaking out their sort of capabilities within those you know, for headers. Um, but if you are doing sort of traditional molecular biology, there's functionalities for that, along with like quality control, microRNA, uh, epigenomics, the like chip seq, and bisulfide sequencing as well. And now, with all those tools, I think that uh, one of the most important uh, ways that we can communicate as scientists is through uh, graphics. So that way we can put them into publications. Uh, those often span things like heat maps that we can see over here in the upper left hand corner. Uh, as we're looking at today, uh, as you know, when we go into sort of the taxonomic profiling, the ability to see that data in, you know, bar charts, uh, uh, starburst graphs, things along those lines are, of course, of great uh, use and of uh, and utilized for our customers. And I think one of the, the main uh, values of the application is that, you know, very easy to create graphics that are ready for publication and makes it easy for you to communicate findings that you have within your data. So that's, you know, one of the reasons why to use the genomics workbench, uh, of course, the graphics, um, but I really, you know, want to point out a few yeah, I guess features uh, that I want to sort of, that you guys, I want you guys to take home today. Um, 
One of that is the ease of use. So today we're going to be looking at an application. Um, and my goal here is to show you it is easy to use, albeit there's a lot of functionality in the application, but it is very consistent in the way that it is um, executed. Everything is you know, done through a graphical user interface that we're going to be looking at today. It is also wizard driven. So we will, we will have a step-by-step -step, um, guide through the analysis where it's asking us for you know, the sequencing reads, for instance, um, you know, what types of references are we using, uh, any additional parameters. And you can see here how it's laid out as you know, step one, step two, step three, step four, step five. And so everything is sort of in that wizard driven analysis to try to make life um, as easy for uh, the scientists to do their bioinformatics work. There's a pipeline editor. We're gonna be able to look at uh, what we, excuse me, we refer to them as workflows. Uh, you can kind of, you know, use the words uh, pipeline and synonymously. Um, we're going to be using some pre-built workflows that come with the MGM module. However, those workflows are, of course, editable, so you can use them as like a building block, or we always have the ability to build own, uh, your own workflows from scratch as well. I already pointed out ready to use publication types of graphics, which we saw in the previous slide. And I think that's also quite useful is the fact that there's an extensive library of tutorials, uh, bioinformatics help, and of course, uh, uh, customer support um, is available as well. The workbench itself is cross-platform uh, compatible. So um, I'm using a Mac machine today, but if you're using Windows, Linux, or Mac, the, the Genomus workbench is going to look uh, exactly the same. So jumping into the workbench, just for a quick second, I always like to point out a few things uh, as we, um, <clears throat> before we get started. So just sort of in an intro, uh, and let me define a few things that we'll be using today. Uh, one, in, uh, first and foremost, is in the upper left-hand corner, we will see the navigation area here. The navigation area is where we store data and we can see here it's just a folder system so you'll see folders and then for instance you know folders within folders and then files within those folders should be pretty much consistent with the way that you would look through your folder structure structure within your windows linux or mac machine today so again where the data is stored is in this what we refer to as the navigation area below the navigation area is our toolbox this is where I tend to use the different tools within the workbench. So I today will be going down here to the word toolbox and then going through those different functions uh, or different tools that are in the application um, to execute different bio, uh, bioinformatics. We do try to give you a sort of a quick start or you know how to get started in the application right here in the middle of the uh, um, working space. So getting started, example data, exploring tutorials, and of course, how to import data or import uh, different data sets. I tend to use the import in the upper left-hand corner. So to, for today's purposes, when I talk about import, this is where, where I'll be uh, pointing out that import functionality. We'll also see the export and our ability to, to produce graphics across this top toolbar copy, cut, paste, things along those lines, again, are available here. The last point that I'm gonna, the last area that I'll point out before we kind of continue along about what's in the MGM is really this upper right-hand corner. In this upper right-hand corner, we have something called workspaces. And you can kind of think of like, if you had multiple projects and you wanted your data or objects open in different you know, tabs almost, if you will, or different, workspaces as we call them, uh, it'll just give you a way of being able to organize those projects and have multiple types of data sets open at once. Plugins, uh, pretty straightforward. This is where we can go in, install and manage plugins. We have a reference manager for downloading genomes and other sort of model organisms. And then next to that, the download function for downloading sequences at NCBI or SRA data. And last but not least up here, the ability to manage or build your workflows. So just from a lay of the land, what I wanted to point out was the navigation area in the upper left, just where we're storing data, the toolbox where I'll be executing different tools from within the application, our working space here in the middle, 
import functions in the upper left and our plugin workflow editor in the upper right. Those are sort of the key areas of the genomics workbench and that what I wanted to cover in sort of a brief overview. Kyogen. Sample to insight.